You guys demanded it. I put it off for long enough. Finally, it's time. How to play like Billy Joe Armstrong. Now, it's kind of a misleading title. Um, it's not really so much how to play like him. It's more like analyze what he does. But it's in the same ballpark, so technically I'm not lying to you. Um, his playing, he's hes more of a songwriter than just a straight-up guitar player. Um, but you can always tell it's Green Day depending on the chord progressions. Because they do have... It's not really unique, but the way they go about it... Uh, that's a bit vague, but we'll get, in, we'll get into that here in a bit. Um, for his playing, you kind of have to understand where his influences lie from the music he listened to when he was a kid and you kind of pick it up and uh, see what he did when he was a kid not see what he did but what he listened to when he was a kid through certain interviews and online forums and stuff like that and then you just have to go and analyze that those bands and eventually you, you'll get back to like BC but fuck nowhere but the shit he listened to and that probably really influenced his playing style there were kind of two genres that he talks about a lot. And, of course, punk is one of them. But another one is metal, believe it or not. Um, he did listen to a lot of metal. and But the influences from the punk are... You don't get too much information from him on that. But you kind of have to go off of what you hear, listen to it, and listen to these bands and kind of understand. Uh, first of all, right off the bat, you already you should hear this. He's totally got this Clash feel to him. I'm pretty sure that's common knowledge, but if you listen to what the Clash does, it's very similar to what Billy Joe Armstrong does. And another band uh, you might not have heard of or listened to is Stiff Little Fingers. If you check out, uh, God, what is the name of their album? Something Inflammable. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but if you check it out and listen to like the singles off that album, you'll understand uh, just why it sounds a lot like Billy Joe. Operation Ivy is another one, of course. They grew up with that band. They were in the same bar part of the Bay Area playing Gilman. And you can just hear it because it's, it was a big influence on him. And then last but not least that I totally hear off the bat is Ramones. Um, not only because they cover them all the time, but... Uh, uh, the chord progressions are fairly similar, just a little bit more modernized. And then his other influences from the metal side are Ozzy, like Blizzard of Oz, and uh, some Black Sabbath. Uh, the, the chord progressions of Sabbath you know right off the bat if you're a Sabbath fan. And Green Day kind of borrows from them sometimes. Like, uh, for example, uh, Children of the Grave, you know how it goes... <laughs> Just listen to that into Jesus' Suburbia and the part where, you know, I mean, obviously. And ACDC a little bit because the chord progressions are kind of somewhat in the same vein. Not that, not very close, but you can tell there's a hint in there. And um, I don't know if this rubbed off on his playing, but he did mention that he really liked the first Van Halen record, which I actually personally happen to like too. But if you take all those bands you heard, combine them together and put a little bit of a pop twist on it, you kind of do get Green Day, if you really think about it. So at least you know where the influences are coming from. Now to actually talk about the, his guitar playing. Um, he is a power chord Joe. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of great songs are really simple. Um, but you have to analyze what the chords are doing to understand. You can't just listen and go, uh, oh, that's Billy Joe Armstrong. It's like, well, what makes it Billy Joe Armstrong? What about it makes Green Day? And for me, for if you guys don't know theory, that's okay. I'm going to talk about it, and then I'll just um, explain it in a way that you'll understand. And if you do, awesome. You'll, you'll get this. Uh, his port chord progression choices are... Um, whether he does this on accident or if he is meaning to do it this way or if he just kind of plays it out and it just, you know, he goes to uh, 
this chord and then goes, oh, if we go here, that'll sound good, that'll sound good. A lot of the times, it's a mixolydian chord progression. Now, it's okay if you don't know what that is. Basically, um, <laughs> these people are going to hammer me for the purists who believe that mixolydian is its own thing. And it is. But this is a great way to explain what it is. Pretend you're in the key of D, right? And that's your thing, and then... And that's your scale. Now pretend you go to A. That's your key center. You are in the key of A, but it's derivative in a way of D. Mixolydian is based off the fifth scale, or the fifth note, the fifth scale degree in the scale. So it's going to be exactly like, oh, I'm sorry, except it's going to have a flat seven instead of a regular seven. So instead of sounding, it's going to go. And what basically that means is it's going to have an ACDC sound. You know how you hear Highway to Hell and you, you go, oh, that song's an A. Well, if, if, you're thinking, uh, if you're thinking out of terms of not mixolydian, it's, it would technically be D, believe it or not. Because if A is a major, G is a major, and D is a major, logic would dictate D is the key point. It's not because A is the key point. That's what you hear. Mixolydian has its own weird thing. Anyway, point is, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong, whether he does this on purpose or not, does a lot of Mixolydian chord progressions. Take an example real quick from Burnout. I declare I don't care no more on the bugs and power. That's in the key of Mixolydian. That's Mixolydian. It's in the key of G, but that chord's in there. So it's in Mixolydian. He probably doesn't know that it's Mixolydian. He just goes, that sounds good. And generally, that is how, how the songs turn about. Because the turnaround key in it is D, and it's major. But you wouldn't do that in a normal key, because logic would dictate, because you'd be in C, and then D would be minor, right? But he's doing it major. Why? Because G is the focal point. He does a lot of that in a lot of his songs. In the Dookie era, Kerplunk, well, Kerplunk, kind of. Yeah, Kerplunk. And Insomniac, he does that a lot. And Nimrod, he kind, he kind of does it in Nimrod. Kind of in the middle era. And he does it in Jesus of Suburbia throughout the whole song. The focal point is that note right there, which I can't think of. A flat, thank you. And he does a lot of like... So Mixolydian. And another thing is his palm muting patterns. Because, you know, a lot of people, when they palm mute, they just go. Like, you know, ba 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 or they just do straight through. But he does, he mixes up his, um, str his strong attacks with his... Uh, weaker ones, and the best example for that is Basket Case. When you hear him playing, he just doesn't go, do you, do you have the time to listen to me whine about... No, because it, it, instead of doing that, it goes... It makes it interesting sounding instead of doing it straight through. And when you hear that type of attack, you do, I, I think of Green Day. I can't, um, I'm probably just not experienced enough to think of other bands that do that, but Green Day was the first band that I heard doing that. So that is totally a Billy Joe thing. And this one's kind of lesser because he doesn't do it very often and it's not really noteworthy, but I'm just going to mention it. Sometimes he likes doing ar arpeggiation, like in Minority or... Uh, Good riddance. You just happen to... If, anyway. It's, it's, like I said, it's not really noteworthy. But 
it's in there and he does it. The main two things are his palm eating patterns and his in the mixolydian thing. And just a side note of I'm fairly certain he doesn't realize it's mixolydian because when I didn't know what it was, I just kind of happened to drop, go that way myself and just pick chords that sound good together. And that's very vague to say, but it's true. And, uh, but in, you just got to keep in mind that he is a culmination of like, you know, so many different things because, uh, Unless you're a goddamn genius, you are going to be a product of what you listen to. And what he listens to is he's a product of. So if you listen to bands like The Clash, Stiff Little Fingers, Operation Ivy, Ramones, Ozzy, some the first Van Halen record, ACDC, and Black Sabbath, and throw that into kind of a pop blender, that is what you get. That, that is what Billy Joe sounds like. And more than anything, like I said in the beginning, he is a songwriter rather than just a straight up guitar player. Uh, because his his style is a bit is a bit uh, non unique, but there's little quirks in there that you hear and you go, ah, that's that's kind of a Green Day thing. I'm sorry I didn't play very much. This is kind of more of an explanation thing rather than just playing songs. You just really have to take what I told you and listen to his, listen to all their stuff and understand kind of what I'm talking about. And you'd be like, oh, I get it. Hopefully. Hopefully I explained it good enough. Maybe I didn't. Um, leave me some comments. If the video really doesn't help you, I'll try my best to get better into depth of what was going on. But until then, hopefully this is enough to satiate your hunger until the next episode of How To comes out. Maybe I'll do Tom DeLonge next. Maybe I'll do Kurt Cobain. Um, maybe I'll do Van Halen because, because you know, I can fucking shred. See you next time.